Hi everyone, it's Math 119, Elementary Statistics. Let's begin. So in lesson one, we're going to start with an introduction. What is statistics? So here's an overview of the overall structure of the course. So we're going to look at the anatomy of a statistical experiment. For example, if you're taking a political poll or doing a, uh, a study on coronavirus vaccine. First of all, you need to design an experiment, and as part of that, you have to carefully define the population. You collect the data. Uh, don't worry, in this class, I'm not going to have you go out and grab people. That's not safe. <laughs> but you collect data, and we'll talk about various ways you can collect data. Third, we take the data and we describe it. That's the art of descriptive statistics, which many of you had in high school. And then by using the tools of probability, which is a whole unit in and of itself, uh, we interpret the data. And that is the art of inferential statistics. That's where the magic really comes in. And that's where pure math professors get kind of creeped out. Okay, so let's talk about the idea of designing an experiment, collecting data, describing data, and then interpreting it. This picture here. All right, so first of all, as part of designing the experiment, we have to carefully define the population of interest. So for example, let's say that, let's say that we're taking a political poll. Uh, we want to know what percent of registered voters in California support President Trump. Uh, granted, a state like Wisconsin might be more interesting. So the population of interest, which we say has size capital N elements or members, in the state of California, it would be in the tens of millions. Uh, the population could be, for example, all adult Americans, maybe all registered voters in California. And again, we need to carefully define what these populations are. So for example, if you're interested in what's happening with all adult Americans, well, a key question is, do adult Americans include undocumented immigrants? Uh, that was an important controversy with the census recently. If you're dealing with all registered voters in California and you want to know what percentage of them support President Trump, granted, probably lower in California than in Wisconsin or in Mississippi, but you can ask uh, uh, what percent of all registered voters in California support President Trump. Well, in, instead of registered voters, you might want to ask about likely voters. Uh, in a national poll, you might want to ask about likely U.S. voters. And different polls might use different models for the purposes of screening poll respondents. So what constitutes a likely U.S. voter? Uh, a Republican poll uh, might have one definition. A Democratic poll might have a different definition. Uh, that's why we suspect that some Republican polls might be biased towards Republicans and some Democratic polls might be biased towards Democrats. Well, more objectively, you could look at issues like voter enthusiasm and voting history. So for example, it's often assumed that someone who voted in a midterm election or in the last presidential election might be more likely to vote in the upcoming presidential election. So defining the population of interest is important. So from that population, we might draw a sample because it would take way too long to ask every registered voter in, in California what he or she thinks about the election. If we do that, that's called a census. <laughs> so for practical purposes, we draw a sample. And within the sample, we describe the data. So from the population of tens of millions of Californians, uh, registered voters in California, well, we draw a random sample of maybe a thousand registered voters in California. And we can describe that data. And then based on that sample data, here's the tricky part, the inference, the inference, where based on what we see on our sample, we try to infer what's happening in the overall population. So for example, if we have a poll of a thousand registered voters in California, and if we find that 35% of the registered voters in our poll support President Trump, what does that say about the true percent in the true population of interest among all registered voters? 
is the actual percent going to be 35% or could it be 40%, 45% or even a majority? So this whole issue of, descri of, of uh, designing the experiment where you describe the population carefully, collecting data to form our sample, which could be a sample of poll respondents or subjects in a scientific study, or maybe uh, some, some sample products on an assembly line if you're testing products for quality control. From that sample, okay, uh, okay, so we collect data to form the sample. Within the sample, we describe the data. We find that, for example, 35% uh, of the registered voters in our poll support President Trump. And then from that, interpreting the data, inferential statistics, what can we say about the population of interest? Okay, so next time we're going to talk about the distinction between population data and sample data and look at some examples.